You attach your You press the button to call the elevator. You select the third floor as your destination. You call the elevator. You select the base. Pressing the button, you call the You select the lobby. Knocking seems less intrusive than ringing the doorbell. Hello, John. Won't you come in? It's nice of you to stop by, John. I'm sorry you missed the funeral. Catherine, I wasn't informed about the time. I wanted to be there. I understand, John. I know how busy you are. I heard about the shooting you were involved in. When I realized you weren't there today, at first, maybe you'd been hurt. Then the chief told me you were fine. I was worried. Thanks for your concern, Catherine, but you don't need to worry about me. I should have called, or... Oh, no. I know how you guys work. It's your life. I understand. I... I was wondering how the investigation was going. Nobody would really tell me very much today. I guess they didn't want to upset me. Well, there's good news. Bob's name has been cleared of any wrongdoing or involvement with the Washington boy's death. Bob's gun was retrieved and ballistics testing cleared it as the murder weapon. 
However, new evidence suggests that Bob's death is unrelated to the alley incident. It appears we might have a cop killer on our hands. Oh, John, that's horrible. Really horrible. Catherine, I know this is a rough time for you, but I need to ask you to think back to the night of the murder. Can you think of anything out of the ordinary happening that night? Any phone calls? Anything Bob might have said? Did he mention anyone? Maybe a name you're unfamiliar with? Bob and I had an argument. He went out, John. I don't know where he went or if he saw anyone. Thing is, he didn't take our car. I don't think anyone picked him up. I mean, we started arguing and the whole thing just blew up. He was gone before I really had a chance to understand what happened. Can you tell me what you argued about? We fought over his drinking. He... oh, everything was manageable until he started taking sedatives to calm down from work. The combination made him mean. He'd yell at Valerie and me for no reason. That's how he left when he went out that night. He'd been drinking and taking pills. John, I sent Bob out there to be killed. It's all my fault. You're wrong, Catherine. It's not your fault. John, I'm going to be gone for a couple of days. I'm taking Valerie to my mother's. I think she and I could both use some rest. I'll call you when we get back. Have a safe trip, Catherine. Thank you, John. Thank you for coming by. I'm here to tell you, the cops are dog in this investigation. Believing that the discovery of murdered police officer Rene Garcia earlier this week is a vicious plot manufactured to discredit him and his music, rapper Yo Money denies any relationship between the lyrics in his music and the increasing violence against the police. Officer Garcia's murder brings the toll to two Los Angeles police officers slain this week. Whether the LAPD is being targeted, or as Joe Money believes, a group is out to discredit his music, one thing is clear. The Los Angeles police are not able to protect themselves from this rash of violence. My question is, if the LAPD can't protect themselves, how can they protect us? I'm Christy Bilden, reporting for... Ah, you bitch! What is she though? Yeah, I got a safety right here. Here's the cold one I promised you, John. Enjoy. So the stories are true. You're not here to play video games. You're here to socialize. You look really nice tonight, Chester. Are you saying that because I usually don't look nice, Carrie? Chester, what kind of name is that? A last name, Carrie. Do either of you realize that you both have gender-based last names? And that they're cross-gendered to your own sex? It's a rather pedestrian observation, I realize, but true. Sam, sometimes it's so obvious you're Mensa. Sam, how many autopsies do you think you've performed? John, I have been in the autopsy business for over 13 years. There is no honest way I could tell you off the top of my head. Let's just say, better than 5,000. The shortstop. You take a few pretzels. Sam, what do you like to do in your free time? Well, John, I'm quite mesmerized with my personal computer. Did you know you can make spreadsheets, write letters, and play games on them? Chester, how come you became a cop? Same reason as everyone else. My father was a cop. Rampart Division. Sam, how long have you and Chester known each other? Chester and I have known each other for five years, Carrie. At one time, we thought there might even be a little sexual tension between the two of us. 
Sometimes I think there still is. Oui, ma chérie? Sometimes I think there still is, Sam. Sam, I think you've had enough to drink. Gary, the mayor has requested your presence at a city council meeting first thing tomorrow. I want you out of here tonight before you have too much to drink. I need you alert and articulate tomorrow. And you, Chester. What are you doing here, consuming alcoholic beverages in your uniform? I should slap you with a 181 personnel infraction. I want both you and Carrie to pick yourselves up and go home. And remember, Carrie, tomorrow, City Hall, 9 a.m. I guess it's time to pack it in, guys. See you later. Gary, another body was brought in this morning. Same M.O. This time it isn't an officer. It's a female. Current status, Jane Doe. She was found in Griffith Park. The mayor and the city council want to ask you a few questions. Get up there and remember, do not divulge anything that could harm this case. Lieutenant. Quit your stalling, Carrie. Get up there. Ladies and gentlemen, I see Detective Carey has been kind enough to attend this session. Detective Carey, please step up to the podium. Detective Carey, my constituents are frightened and want answers. What is the status of your investigation? Hey, Carrie, if the cops can't protect themselves, how are they going to protect me and my family? Detective, we need protection. What are the police doing about that? Detective Carrie, I, I own a business and I'm afraid to stay open at night now. Is the police department stepping up patrols? Joel's not asking you any questions. No. Detective Carey, Christy Building with KKAT. What can you tell us about the body found in Griffith Park this morning? From what we understand, the victim was not a police officer, which would indicate that this killer is not necessarily targeting one group. Your comments, please. Miss Bilden, I was briefed about the homicide just this morning as I entered this council meeting. I have not yet been able to confirm or refute its relationship to my current investigation. Detective Carey, two Los Angeles police officers have been killed in as many days. The citizens of this city are in fear over the threat to the police and how this is affecting their safety. Detective Carey, what are you doing to find this murderer? And are our citizens' fears justified? Mr. Mayor, the police department has always had to deal with the threat of violence. Tragically, someone has now moved from thought to deed. However, I do not believe that there is a threat against the city as a whole, or that a random selection process is occurring. It is my belief that the Los Angeles Police Department is living up to the oath to protect and to serve. Drop the stick! Put your hands behind your head! Turn around! Get down on your knees! Keep your hands where I can see them! What a morning I've had. First the mayor and the city council, and then Walker. Jeez, the feds are talking to Walker right now. 
Apparently, he's a real special case. It's your very... Your report can fit on the form you already have. Those two... You complete report... Standard. Here you go, Hal. You are, Junior. You call the elevator. You select the lobby as your destination. You turn the knob and open the door, detective. Hello, partner. Today's the day. You ready to qualify? Hey there, partner. Hey there. Hey there. Hey there. These trophies were won in March. Those are qualifications. How are you, Bert? Well, cowboy, I ain't complaining. Life's good. Those are qualification forms. You fill the form out according to department specifications. Hey there, partner. What you reaching for? Upon review, qualification form 13... The card is... Th Here you go, Bert. Thank you, partner.
you pick up the headgear. Quit your fooling, partner. Qualifying's on the department. That there ammo's all yours. Officers, take your field positions, please. Officers, headgear on. Officers, headgear on. All firearms to low ready. You low. It's your. Phase one. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Attention. Gun to low ready. Prepare for phase two. You load your. Phase two. Ready on the right, ready on the left, attention. Gun to low ready, prepare for phase three. You load, it's your Beretta. Phase three. Ready on the right, ready on the left, attention. Gun to low ready. Prepare for You load. Phase four. Ready on the right. Ready on the left. Attention. Gun to low ready. You load. Phase five. Ready on the right, ready on the left, attention. Gun to low ready, prepare. You low. Phase six. Ready on the right, ready on the left, attention. Holster all firearms. Hey there, partner. Out there was some pretty fancy firing. Your score is going to impress the brass. I'll be sending your results over to your lieutenant. You're making him proud at Parker Center there, cowboy. Thank you, partner. You attach You press the button to call the elevator.
You select the third floor as your destination. Your app. Al, what have you heard about a body with a similar M.O. showing up at Griffith Park? Hell, Junior, it looks like it belongs to us. I wasn't there, but that Nobles was. He knows all about it. What have you got in the way of updates, Hal? You're damn lucky you got me as a partner, Junior. I got friends everywhere. I was the first one my buddies over at Hollenbeck called. Seems they got the patrol car, Garcia's patrol car. Seems the damn thing was found abandoned at Hollywood and Vine. Hollywood and Vine? That wasn't Garcia's patrol area, was it? Hell no it ain't, Junior. Seems our good son ain't so good. Either that or hell, Junior, he was good at something damn good. You call the yellow. You select the lobby. Hello, I'm Detective Carey, Homicide LAPD. I'd like to take a look at the patrol car that was brought in. <laughs> I don't recognize you, pal. Can't let you in. That car is part of an investigation. <laughs> I'm heading up the investigation. I'd like to take a look at the car. <laughs> oh, sure, pal. Now, how do I know you're not the perverted weenie hacking up all these bodies, huh? <laughs> Well, tell Beavis that butthead sent you. He'll know what it means. <laughs> hey, you whippersnapper. Can I help you? Uh, Beavis? I was told to tell you that Butthead sent me. Huh? <laughs> 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 
Okay, buddy, what do you want? I'm looking for a patrol car that was brought in from the Hollywood and Vine area. It had been abandoned. Well, come right in there. <laughs> What is it you're trying to say? Officer Rene Garcia's patrol car. You pick up the small piece of torn newspaper. Well, thank you for the information and your time. Hey, no problemo, old buddy. That's what we're here for, helping our friends. Getting run over wouldn't help your case, detective. Entering the morgue always provides us Hi, Detective Carey. No time to say hello, Detective Carey? Wow, you must be real busy. You can go on in, Detective Carey. Hello, Detective Carey. Why did the psychiatrist's mechanic have a bad day? I don't know. Because he had a screw loose. <laughs> Go right in, Detective. You know Sam's a sailor? If he could, do you know where he'd go sailing? I don't know. The Dead Sea! <laughs> what do you call two guys with no arms and no legs hanging in a window? I don't know. Curtain Rod! <laughs> How can you tell when someone's been choked to death instead of by accidental ligature strangulation? I don't know. By the occluded blood vessels and thyroid fracture! Why did the pessimist start wearing sunglasses? I don't know. He got tired of looking on the bright side of life. Hello, John. Hello, Sam. 
How's the world of the living, John? I don't know, Sam. I'm surrounded by death. Sam, I understand another body was found this morning in Griffith Park. What can you tell me about it? More than you probably want to know, John. More than you want to know. Let's start with whether identification has been made and a general description. Identification has not been made. The description is as follows. African-American female, mid-30s, found under a tree in Griffith Park by Park Police at 10 a.m. She was clothed, no ID. The body was being guarded by a stray dog. Has the autopsy been performed yet? As soon as she arrived, John, same M.O. The burns, injection marks, the glue, it's all there. Body fluids and a tissue sample have been taken. Both have been sent to SID. Your killer is keeping busy, John. Very busy. What about the injection marks, Sam? Everything the same? Nearly so. The injections were not so high up on the arm as the first two victims, but it was the left arm. What about lividity, Sam? Primary only, buttocks, back, and shoulders. All consistent from lying in the park. Your killer moved her soon after the deed. Apparently, he's working faster. Was she as badly mutilated as the first two? The mutilation is worse. The right forearm was severed. However, the torture appears to be less. There are fewer burns, and there's also less bruising around the ankles and wrists. Has the autopsy been performed yet? As soon as she arrived, John. What orifice was glued shut, Sam? Your killer was kind to her, John. Both her eyes and mouth were glued shut. He didn't make her watch. If there's been no identification, then there's been no notification. Where's the body now? Cold storage, John. We'll hold on to it until the family can be located. Anything else I should know, Sam? It might turn out important, maybe not, but I scraped a sticky substance off her shoe. I have sent it to SID for analysis. Sam, what color were her shoes, and was she wearing both of them? Blue and yes. Dog? The body was being guarded by a dog? Yes, it was rather comical and strangely sad at the same time. Here is this woman in the prime of her life lying mutilated under a tree. And protecting her is a stray dog. Park police couldn't get past the dog. We couldn't move in. It was only after we called animal control and the truck showed up that the dog ran. I'll tell you, John, that dog has been picked up before. That dog recognized the truck. Sam, did the toxicology results come back on Garcia? Not yet, John, but we did make a discovery concerning Garcia. If you remember, Garcia's mouth was glued shut. When the mouth was surgically opened, we found a molar had been freshly extracted. The work was not that of a dentist, John. Thus far, your killer has a finger, a full set of toes, a forearm, and a molar. You know what that means, don't you? Yes, unfortunately I do, Sam. I'm looking for a serial killer who takes a souvenir of the kill. It means he enjoys the kill itself and wants to relive it through the object. I need to find this person fast, Sam. Real fast.
you open the door and head to the lobby. Grabby, aren't you, detective? The dog appears protective of the tree. The dog appears... The area has been taped off. It must be where the Jane Doe... You're not close enough. The dog's present. What is it you... He's hungry! The area has been taped off. It must... You're not close enough. Knowing what was found here, this is a sorrowful sight. Knowing what was... Careful, Carrie. You don't want to remove the band. What is it? Removing the dirt reveals a bone. Those two items... It's your department issued hum... The baggies hold evidence found... Placing the bone in the bag is essential to maintaining the integrity of this potentially valuable evidence. You record that a bone was found at this location. Entering the morgue always provides a sense of anticipation. Uh, oh, yes, well, hello, John. I was just checking Sherry. It appears she might have a bit of a chest cold. On to the business at hand. Improper hair. Sam, I unearthed this bone from the Jane Doe 1201K crime scene. Strangest thing, a stray dog was there guarding it. It looks human, John. Turn it into property with a request for tests and we'll take a closer look at it. A stray dog, you say? Probably the same one we encountered the day we went out to pick up body 1201K. Screw the dog and screw the request for tests. I've got the city, the press, and my supervisors all over my ass. You've got the evidence in your hand, for Christ's sake. Run the tests. This investigation does not have time for a red tape marathon. You're right, John. I'm sorry. It's working for the county. We tend to thrive on the bureaucracy. Trust me, John. I will place the tests on the top of my priority list. What happened to the car? Was it ID'd? The car was towed to Hollenbeck. When I last heard, SID was headed there to go over the car. 
I'll have you know, John, I'm beginning to feel like your secretary. Sam, what's the situation surrounding the body's discovery? The call came in from a small business owner on Hollywood and Vine. The naked bodies were piled one on top of the other in the back seat of a Ford Tempo parked in front of his music store. All right, Sam, what can you give me on the Jane Doe? Asian, late 60s, burns to face and upper torso, mutilation, glued orifice. Your killer signature is all over her. How was glue applied this time, Sam? The eyes and ears were filled with glue. Your killer's kind to women, John. He doesn't make them watch, if one can call his behavior kind on any level. What about the autopsy, Sam? Have you had time to perform one? No, John. I plan to do it first thing in the morning. I was able to give the body a cursory look over, however. There's no doubt it's your killer's handiwork. What is the level of mutilation, Sam? The left foot was crudely severed. Once again, judging by the lack of apparent blood loss, it was removed after death. Poisoning cause of death, Sam? I would venture to say yes to poisoning due to the fact that there are two injection marks on the upper left arm. But I'm cautious to say so, John. We have not had a single match in all the toxicology tests thus far. When the body's autopsied, we'll take fluids and send them out as well. Lividity, Sam? Yes, primary only. The backside. Corresponds to how the body was found. What are the particulars on the John Doe, Sam? The body was mutilated much the same as the other bodies. Burn marks, severed extremities, epoxied orifice. The biggest difference is the adornment of the body with a pair of nylon pantyhose wrapped around the neck. Have you performed the John Doe autopsy? No, tomorrow, first thing. I did go over the body for a cursory look when it was brought in. You have a monster on your hands, John. A killing machine. Poisoning cause of death, Sam? It was not asphyxiation as one might first believe upon seeing the nylons around the neck. A cursory examination of the neck reveals no bruising. The nylons appear to be strictly decorative. Upon autopsy, I believe poisoning will surface as the cause. Primary lividity only on the John Doe? Correct. Front side. Corresponds directly to how the body was found. Your killer is working fast, John. Directly after the kill, they're being moved. Fill me in on the mutilation, Sam. What was missing with John Doe? The ears, John. They were crudely severed, removed after death. Could the nylons belong to the Jane Doe? Possibly the nylons were used in a consensual sexual activity between the two. John, this was not a sexual experience gone to extremes. No, John, this has all the markings of your killer. The burns, the mutilation, and the nylons, they couldn't belong to Jane Doe. Why is that, Sam? Jane Doe weighed in at 85 pounds, 12 ounces. The nylons are large enough to have fit three of her. What about the epoxied orifice, Sam? How was the John Doe affected? The mouth was affected. Between both bodies, you have the epitome of hear no evil, say no evil, see no evil. Sam, what's the situation? 
The call came in from a small business owner on Hollywood and Vine. The naked bodies were piled one on top of the other in the back seat of a Ford Tempo parked in front of his music store. You open the door. The county spared no expense to furnish the coroner's office. Goodbye, and have a nice day, Detective Carey. Detective Carey, you're a flirt. Am I being arrested? Gonna throw me in a cell with a big old burly guy, huh? Ooh, darling, start the party! Looks like another character attracted to this part of town. Did you know Officer Garcia? Was he a frequent visitor to this neighborhood? Never heard of him, darling, till he showed up dead. Now the whole place is crawling with all sorts of people talking about him. Ew! Well, if you ask me, I would ask the girls at the kitty. I mean, hmm, they know everybody who's anybody. Did you see an abandoned patrol car in the neighborhood? Do you know anything about it? Well, darling, I missed it, but it was all the talk. People were saying that the cop, who the car belonged to, went for a dip at the kitty and fell right in, if you know what I mean. Then, there was all this talk about this cop, that he had some steady girl, I, mean, I don't know about that, darling, I mean, lots of the girls at the kitty have boyfriends. But people said they saw this fabulous woman driving the patrol car. Oh, can you believe it? I mean, all made up. Can you stand it? Hair all stacked up, dressed to the teeth, you know, a real glamour queen, if you know what I mean. Well, all this was supposed to have happened after the cop's poor little bear ass showed up dead on your money's lawn. <laughs> well, that's the talk, darling. You got it. Straight from the horse's mouth. What can you tell me about this supposed girlfriend seen driving Garcia's patrol car? Well, just that she was supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I didn't see her, but I heard she was one big, beautiful, honking woman. I mean, it's not really my thing, but by now, the size of her breasts have probably become legendary. You referred to having heard this information, that you didn't actually see any of this. Whom have you heard this from? Can you give me a name or two? Oh, honey, it's all over the streets, that's all. I mean, talk to anybody you see. They'll all tell you they heard it, too. I mean, darling, I don't know any names, just people. You know, people don't tell you their names. They like confidentiality, wouldn't you? Have you seen any unusual activity in the neighborhood? Oh, darling, come on, this is Hollywood and Vine, get alive! There's always something strange going on down here. <laughs> is there anything else you can think of, uh, I mean, of, to tell me? No, I think that's it, honey. Except to tell you, I just love your suit. I just love the way it drapes and hugs your body. Fabulous. Really fabulous. You've got a job to do, Detective. Don't wander off. You push the door open.
Hello there, handsome. Hello, I'm Detective Carey, LAPD Homicide. I'm investigating a series of murders. I was wondering if you'd talk to me. Detective, to whom do you wish to speak? Mmm, so you're a real cop. Tell me, handsome, is everything you're packing real? She certainly looks like she's in good shape. Control yourself, Carrie. You're on duty. Do you know a police officer by the name of Rene Garcia? About 190 pounds, 6 feet tall, late 20s, full mustache. He might have come in during the day, possibly in uniform. Maybe. Lots of cops come in here. This Garcia sounds like he could be any number of fellas that pass through here each day. Garcia's patrol car was abandoned on this block. Did you happen to see it or hear anything about it? I didn't see it, but then I sleep in pretty late. Hey, are we talking about the cop who showed up dead at Yo Money's? Yes, his name was Garcia. Do you know something specific? Well, if it's the fella I'm thinking of, I heard people saying he used to give rides to girlfriends. You know, show off the siren and the handcuffs. The Bitty Kitty has quite a reputation. The way I see it, we're doing social work here. Lots of lonely men in the world. You ever get lonely, handsome? Besides, I'm just doing this until I get a break. I'm really an actress. I've already been in one picture. It was called Foaming Fun. I was the girl the worm monster ate. I was in a jacuzzi and a big worm came up out of the water. I screamed and then the water got all bubbly. I guess it ate me. Do you or any of the other girls here date cops? Could Officer Garcia have had a girlfriend who worked here? It's club policy that we don't date the customers, but everybody does it. I don't know if this Garcia dated anyone here. All the girls are well, pretty quiet about their private life. Nobody wants to get fired. I found this shoe in Yo Money's garden. Money told me he had strippers in his house the morning Officer Garcia's body was found. Do you know if any of the girls from the kitty know Money or were at a party at his house this week? Does this shoe look familiar? Well, it's true all us girls know celebrities, and Money does come here. We've all been invited to parties one time or another out at his place. As far as this week, I don't know. I do know it's not mine. I'm very petite, and well, that would never fit me. Barbie might know, though. Who's Barbie, and why might she know? Barbie runs a place, handsome. Barbie can. Ever heard of her? She is infamous. Well, she'll know if any of the girls are at Money's this week. You can ask her. Where is Barbie? Can I talk to her? She's taking a nap right now. She'll be up later. You could come back. Got a light, handsome? Amico Industrial Strength Blue. You're in a strip club. Don't be so g careful, Carrie. Boy, can that girl dance? She's non-stop.
I'm with Major Crimes, Homicide. You look like a cop, dude. I, you look like... Hello, I'm Detective Carey, LAPD. I was wondering if I could ask you some questions. Sure, what's up, dude? A Ford Tempo was apparently abandoned on this block this morning. I understand you called it in. That's true, dude. I did. What can you tell me about what you found? Well, I opened the store around 10. The car was parked out front. Dude, I didn't think anything about it. I went to go get my keys for the door, and I looked over and saw these two nude people. I thought, you know, dude, they're just having a party. I figured, what the hell? I just opened up the store, figured when they got done, they'd shove off. After a while, I looked out. The car was still there, but about 11, I locked up and went out and got some coffee. And on my way back, I looked in, and you know, it's kind of funny. What was funny? The car wasn't moving, dude. No motion, no party. I'm a businessman, dude. I can't have a car full of naked people outside my store. I called the police. What can you tell me? Well, I opened the store. I went. I figured after a while I looked out. It appears to be a piece of broken glass or mirror. You pick up the broken piece of side mirror. It's your T-Bird. It's your T- You push the door open. Why, hello there, darling. Hello, I'm Detective John Carey, LAPD Homicide. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Absolutely not, darling. I don't talk to police. Officially, that is. You see, darling, I'm very well connected, and I really don't want any trouble. What I could tell, darling, could cause this city to come crashing down. Well, how about if we talk off the record? Just a little talk between friends. Oh, darling, you going to be my friend? Okay, then. I'll talk to you off the record. Why don't we start with an introduction? As I told you, my name is John Carey, and I bet you're Barbie Can. Oh, darling, you're so smart. You're good-looking and smart. Just how I like my friends. Now, what is it you want to know? Tell Barbie how she can help you. Well, the subject's a bit gruesome. I'd like to ask you some questions about a series of murders I'm investigating. Darling, in my day I've had more notorious conversations, I'm sure. Try me, darling. This shoe was found on Yo Money's lawn after the party and after Officer Garcia's body was found. Could it belong to one of your girls? Darling, I don't think so. It's large. Even too large for me and I am a big woman. Darling, I think it would fit you better than it would fit me. A 
police officer by the name of Rene Garcia was found murdered. The officer's patrol car was abandoned in this neighborhood. Have you ever met or did you know Officer Garcia? Oh, darling, I heard about that boy after he was found dead. Then all that talk, I, I do not think I knew him. We get so many young men in here. What can you tell me about the abandoned patrol car? Did you see it? Oh, darling, I just know what I heard. The boy gave his patrol car away to a girlfriend or some such thing. I don't really know. I did hear, though, that this girl is most beautiful. Darling, she is so beautiful and her figure is so perfect. People thought it was me, but I'm too old for such a young boy. Do the girls here date the customers? Would it be possible that one of your girls dated Officer Garcia? Darling, I have rules, but what those girls do, I cannot control. They are young women. They're all looking for husbands. It is possible, but I do not know one who was dating him. Officer Garcia was found dead on the lawn of Yo Money, and from what I understand, there were strippers there. Do you know Yo Money? And do you know if any of your girls went to a party there Monday evening? Oh, darling, the money man is wonderful, so strong, such a lover of beautiful women. He does not always schedule his parties through me, that bad boy. If some of my girls were there on that night off, I, I have no idea. This must be Barbie Can. She's quite beautiful. Oh, darling. Squizzle sticks and straws. The bitty kitty is itty bitty. Squizzle stick. The bitty kitty. The bitty kitty is. Boy, can that girl dance. She's non stop. Miss Moore, what can you tell us about the latest victims in what's being termed this city's most gruesome murder spree? Me? Well, I, uh, nothing really. Am I going to be on TV? Miss Moore, is it true that all the victims have been tortured, mutilated? Well, they're... they're... not all there, um... Uh... Miss Moore, is it true that Officer Rene Garcia and the latest male victim and unidentified John Doe were both found not only tortured, but naked? Uh, well, yes. I mean, well, no. You see, is that camera on? So, Miss Moore, are you confirming that John Doe was not entirely nude? That he was found with a pair of nylons on his person? Is it true the nylons were wrapped around his neck? How'd you know that? So you are confirming this information. Detective Carey, can you comment on the nylons wrapped around the neck of the victim? I have nothing to say to you, Bilden, nor does Miss Moore. Hi, Detective Carey. Cherry, I'm taking you home. Bilden, you muck up my investigation and I'll have your job. Come on, Sherry. Detective Carey, the public has a right to know. It's their safety at stake. Detective Carey... In the wake of this city's worst nightmare, five people, including two Los Angeles police officers, have been found mutilated and murdered.
and though city officials and the LAPD deny there is reason to panic, the citizens of Los Angeles feel quite differently. Gun sales are up, and security companies are deluged with requests for home alarm systems. Factors contributing to the urgency and concern by LA residents are the randomness and violence of these murders. Earlier today, I spoke with Sherry Moore, an LA County Coroner's employee, who confirmed one element of this killing spree. Evidence found on the latest male victim indicates that the murders might have been committed by a woman. If true, then this is the first case in the history of Los Angeles where a female serial killer has held the city in her grip. I'm Christy Bilden, reporting for KKAT.